1662, a group of admirals raised their concerns about the decimation of British woodland due to a growing population, new glass factories and ironworks, and the recent civil war. The shortage of timber would undermine the Navy's ability to build bigger and better ships. This led to the publication of one of the earliest records of sustainable development, which stated that no pursuit was more kingly than that of planting for posterity. This definition of sustainable development endures, with the 1987 Brundtland Commission labelling it development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. The Commission went on to emphasise the need for an economic system that balances people's needs, especially the essential needs of the most vulnerable, with the limitations imposed by technology, society and the environment. This has previously been represented through a Venn diagram, wherein social, economic and environmental factors are trade-offs, and sustainable development is the sweet spot in the centre. However, experts propose instead placing the factors within each other. This better conveys the idea that economic needs are nested within societal needs, which in turn are nested within the needs of the environment. Ultimately, our economy and society are dependent on the environment and would cease to function without it. The donut model was proposed by economist Kate Rayworth. This model proposes an economic system that maintains activity within the minimum level required to provide all humans with basic quality of life and the maximum level our planet is capable of coping with. Action is required to transition towards this state, and the most prominent initiative in this area is the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, with its 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Following the Millennium Development Goals, which achieved mixed levels of success, the 2030 Agenda was adopted. It aimed to end poverty and hunger, to combat inequalities within and among countries, to build peaceful, just and inclusive societies, to protect human rights, and ensure the lasting protection of the planet and its natural resources. Vitally, specific, dated targets and quantifiable indicators made each goal more tangible and measurable. Let's look at some of the goals most pertinent to the environment. Goal 7. Affordable and clean energy. We must ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable and modern energy for all. This includes electricity, heating, cooking and transport. Among others, it is indicated by renewable energy share and investments in energy efficiency. Goal 11. Sustainable cities and communities. We must make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. This consists of a mixture of social improvements, but also priming cities against natural disasters, reducing environmental impacts such as air pollution and improving access to green space. Goal 12. Responsible consumption and production. We must ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. These are explored in our natural resources videos. Goal 13. Climate action. We must take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. These are explored in our climate change videos. Goals 14 and 15 life below water and life on land. We must conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development whilst we protect, restore and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably manage forests, combat desertification and halt and reverse land degradation and biodiversity loss. This will be explored more in our biodiversity and ecosystems videos. Goal 16, peace, justice and strong institutions. We must promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. These will provide the setting for societal change and the mechanisms to establish and enforce environmental policy. Goal 17. Partnership for the goals. This final goal is especially important, as universal adoption and collective action on the goals are necessary to prevent problems being simply relocated around the world. Further to this, it is important to account for different levels of development and national policies and priorities in order to ensure transnational equality. Despite our focus on the environmental goals of the 2030 Agenda, it is essential to not neglect the social and economic goals such as ending gender inequality, promoting education and boosting safe employment and innovation. To prioritise some goals to the detriment of others would limit their success and prevent achievement of the Agenda overall. Only coordinated, multilateral efforts represent genuinely sustainable development. To recap, Sustainable development is development which meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. It encompasses economic, social and environmental factors which are highly interrelated. The 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals provide a framework through which these factors can be addressed, but a coordinated global effort is required to achieve this. In our next video, we'll take you through some examples of where these principles have been applied.